Hi, for this video, we're going to solve a rational inequality algebraically. Um, for this one, what we're doing is we're trying to look for all values of x that when I plug them in, give me an output that is greater than or equal to zero. So basically what that's looking for is we're looking for positive values or a value of zero. A couple things you have to remember with rational inequal or rational functions. The denominator can never be zero, because if the denominator is zero, then you have an undefined expression. So um, what you are going to do is you're going to find the undefined values first. So we're going to set the denominator equal to zero. So I would just take the x minus 7 and set it equal to zero, and then I would solve this. So we know that x cannot equal 7. This tells me that I have a vertical asymptote at that point. Um, a vertical asymptote, if you recall, is a line that the graph gets closer and closer to, but it never actually touches. And then we also need to find the zeros of the rational um, function. And the value that would make it zero is when the numerator is equal to zero. So we would set the numerator equal to zero. Um, because of the fact that we're looking for greater than or equal to, this value can equal this is a, an acceptable value. It's something that can be included because it's greater than or equal to. If it was not equal to and just greater than, then we would use, we would say that we're not looking for this value. So we would just set the numerator equal to zero. So x plus five equals zero, and we end up with x equals negative five. So if we draw our number line, just to kind of help us, this is really going to be our x axis. Um, we know that on the x axis that at seven, so if I go over here to 7, this is where it's going to um, have an asymptote. So at this point right here, we're going to have an asymptote um, at 7. We also have a 0 at negative 5. That means that my graph is going to cross the x-axis at negative 5. And this one, it can include it because of the fact that we're looking for greater than or equal to. So what we're going to do is the same thing. If you watched the polynomial inequalities, I would do the same thing um, as we did there. What we're going to do is we're going to pick values that are in each of the intervals. So we have something, we need something that's to the left of negative 5. We need something between negative 5 and 7, and we need a value that is greater than. You can pick any value. It does not matter which one you pick. So like I could pick negative 100. I don't advise it just because it makes it harder to deal with. Um, so I tend to pick values that are close together. So we would have x plus 5 over x minus 7 is what we're going to plug our x value in. And then we're going to just look at the sign. We're simply looking for a positive sign um, is going to help us with our solution. So with this, like I said, we want to pick one from each of the intervals. So I'm going to start with negative 6 since negative 6 is um, from negative infinity to negative 5. So it's in this interval right here. And all I'm looking for is the sign. I'm also going to pick something in between negative 5 and 7. So I'm going to pick 0 and something that's greater than 7. So let's say 8. And like I said, all we're looking for is the sign. So on this one, in the top, if I take negative 6 plus 5, that's going to give me a negative sign. And if I plug in negative 6 minus 7, that's also going to give me a negative, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So this one's telling me that anything over here is going to be positive. For the next one, when we plug in 0, I would have a positive on the top because 0 plus 5 is 5. And then 0 minus 7 would give me negative 7, so a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So that tells me that everything between negative 5 and 7 is below the x-axis. It's a negative value. And then the last one is 8. Um, so for 8, what we would do is we would plug in 8. 8 plus 5 gives me a positive. And then if I do 8 minus 7, that also gives me a positive. And a positive divided by a positive is a positive. So we can see that we have two intervals that are greater than or equal to zero or that have result in positive values. So with this, if we wrote our answer in interval notation, we can see that anything from negative infinity up to negative five, and remember that this includes it because zero is included in the greater than or equal to, um, anything from negative infinity to negative five would give us a positive value or zero. Or 
we could also say that from seven not included, because remember that this is going to be an asymptote at this point. So we've got um, a break in our graph here. So everything from seven to positive infinity would also yield a positive um, value in our asymptote. For set notation, if you like using set notation better, you would just write this as x such that x is less than or equal to negative 5. That's how we would write this part right here. And then 7 to infinity is really just x is greater than 7. Um, sometimes it's helpful to be able to look at this visually. You can use a graphing calculator. Um, I am going to use a website called desmos.com. So if you're not familiar with this, desmos.com um, is a free graphing site that you can use. Like if you have homework at home and you don't can't afford a graphing calculator, um, Desmos is free. So what you would do is you would just come in here and you basically just plug in your um, equation exactly like it was. So for this particular one, we had x plus 5. And then we would divide that by x plus, or sorry, x minus 7. Okay, and right now you can't really see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see the graph. And so you can see right here that there is a change in the sign right here. It does go from positive and then it becomes negative at the point negative 5, 0. And then you can see this whole part right here is also positive. Um, the x equals 7, it's kind of hard to see that. So if you wanted to, I could add um, another expression and I can say that x equals 7. And it'll graph a vertical line there so that we can see that that's where our asymptote is. So the x equals 7, it gets closer and closer to this. So from 7 all the way to positive infinity, we have a positive graph. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have topics that you need me to cover, please just let me know.